Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a video for you on this little guy right here. This is the uh, Null Knives Raikou. Um, this is an interesting little piece, although in some ways it's actually not a particularly crazy little piece right here. This is uh, a brand new version of, effectively, version of this little guy right here. This is the Null Knives Raiden. I've reviewed the Raiden before on the channel, and this knife here is from my personal collection. I like the Raiden a lot. I think it's one of the best sort of, uh, at least in the recent couple of years, uh, maker working with overseas factory sort of designs because it's a very clearly conscientious design. Design. They've done a lot of things right in terms of ergonomics, in terms of daily use, etc. Uh, and so when Null Knives reached out to me and said, hey Nick, I've got a new version effectively, it's, they're calling it a new model, but it's basically a different version of the uh, the Raiden here with a Warncliffe style blade with the finger flicking and a couple of other little tiny changes. But in practice, uh, these are basically the same knife. And because they are basically the same knife, my review is not so different, right? And so rather than doing a full new review, which I think would sort of not make a lot of sense, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do the disassembly, because I know that's why a lot of folks come to my channel, uh, and then I'm going to give my kind of impressions of the knife after carrying it for a little while. Now, first off, uh, two things. I want to be very clear that this is a, a manufacturer prototype, right? This is sent to me by Null Knives. In fact, they have a little list of things that are going to differ in the, uh, the, the, the the final version. Uh, they're reducing, they're grinding the edge a little bit thinner. Not a big deal, but that is always nice to see. The uh, thumb stud will be aligned with the center of this groove, which is nice. They're changing the clip position just a little tiny bit. They're thinning the top of the harpoon a little bit, and the logo will be made a little smaller. Those are the only differences in production, according to Null Knives. So that's, you know, what's going on there. But anyways, I'm just going to take it apart here, um, do a little disassembly, and uh, then we'll uh, talk about it a little bit. Now, to be clear, I actually did a disassembly uh, when I first got it, so this is going to be in a very nice state here. Um, one thing that is interesting, uh, let's go on ahead and dive into it. Um, we can uh, go on ahead and unscrew this. One thing that you're going to see different here is that this screw is relatively short, and this screw further back is relatively long. Uh, so what we see here is we have two very different length screws uh, for these two holes. So obviously you can't exactly screw that up because this one won't go in, but nevertheless, uh, I can see it being a little bit confusing, and it kind of makes sense, because this one is going into the back spacer, whereas this one goes all the way through into the tie on the other side. Uh, so do keep that in mind as you're taking this guy apart, um, and so there is that. Um, let's go on ahead and uh, pop out the pivot here. The pivot is a very, very tight and very, very shallow uh, T8. Uh, All of these screws are T8, which I appreciate. But what we see here, there is just not a lot of wall on the sides of that T8 for you drive it a grip into. Not the end of the world, but it is a little bit of a frustration, uh, right? This is a very, very shallow screw, as opposed to some of the things you see on like a Chris Reeve or something like that. So whatever, not the end of the world, but it is a thing. Whoa there, this is disassembling itself quite nicely, and we're seeing that Exxon Shabazz was already here. Um, so there you go. Um, let's go on ahead and uh, continue cleaning this out. The, um, let's see here. By the way, if you're curious about any of the tools I'm using, nickshabazz.com slash tools has a full list of everything, including drivers and whatnot. Um, but uh, let's go on ahead and clean off the bearings here. I'm using rubbing alcohol here right now on a, a little swatch of uh, fabric and just cleaning up the oil after the tanker crashed in it. Whoops. Don't know anyone who would do that. Nope. Not me. All right. Um... What we see here, though, is, as I mentioned, there is a backspacer here. This smaller, shorter screw screws into the backspacer. The other one goes through. There's also a stabilizing uh, pin, and there's also Raikou Proto 4 on this guy, which, nice little stylish, right? Why not? Uh, one other thing I'll highlight is that there is not only internal milling on this side and in the backspacer, but there's also internal milling on the carbon fiber, which, given that carbon fiber is um, pretty lightweight itself, feels a little like gilding the lily, but it is effort, right? And I always appreciate seeing effort, right? No no arguments there. I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to use knife pivot lube here to put it together, and apparently I'm going to use too damn much of it. By the way, this is a very extemporaneous video. The reason for this is twofold. Uh, to start with, it is um, under slight time constraint. 
This knife is going to be going up for a pre-order in, uh, well, a few days, and I want to get this up before then, right? So that way people can make a decision ahead of time. Um, and also, I was willing to take that on because I'm so familiar with the Raiden, because I carry it and like it a lot. So um, there is that. Go ahead and put that on there. Give it a little bit of a spin. And then I can slip this dude onto place, into place, I suppose. I'll start off by putting the pivot in. I do like that all the screws are T8, although, boy, I wish they were a little less shallow. Um, shallow with an American reality TV. Uh, let's go on ahead and put some Loctite on this as I'm thinking about it. It is a prototype, but, you know, why not? All right, so we'll screw that in there. Beautiful. And put that in. I will go ahead and put this in as well. But yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm shooting from the hip a little bit more on this video than usual, but uh, hopefully it's not too much of a problem. The other reason is that my, oh boy, has my life been a, oh, <laughs> it's been a day, it's been a week, it's been a month, it's been, oh boy, has it been. So as a result, if I am even less of a brilliant man than usual, um, eh, not an excuse, but certainly an explanation. Okay. That's in really good shape, centered, beautiful. No argument there. All right, so we've got this guy back together here, and we see that the internals of it are quite straightforward. There's not a whole lot to complain about. There's not a whole lot there, honestly. And I mean that in a, in a nice way, right? It can be frustrating when there's excessive complexity or anything like that. I mean, this is sort of yet another Chinese factory frame lock, right? Uh, we've all seen about a bazillion of these, and this is one of them confirmed. Um, let's talk about the knife itself. Um, first off, in terms of size, what we see is that the, uh, the, it's almost the same as the, the, the Raiden here, uh, in the handle front. Uh, in terms of blade, though, it is different, right? We see that I can measure this guy up just under three and a half inches, uh, whereas the Raiden comes in closer to 3.25 or so. So, uh, there is that difference there, and obviously the Warncliffe thing is, from here, they're pretty different. From here, they're basically the same. I'm not saying, by the way, that the, the, the handle and body is exactly the same. I don't know that you could, you probably couldn't go through and do like a blade swap or anything like that. Don't, the, 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 don't go there. However, um, this is a, uh, it's an interesting thing. Uh, they were able basically to find some extra handle uh, to, to put this blade into, and I kind of respect that, right? I'd give somebody an option uh, without a whole lot of retooling. So there's that. In terms of size, let's also do the other comparisons, of course. Here it is against your Spydeco PM2 and your Spydeco Delica. And what we're going to see here is that, again, the handle on this guy is not so different in size than the Delica, but the blade is uh, much bigger, which is kind of cool. And then here it is against the Rat2. Um, there is another knife uh, by Null. I want to say it's called the Voodoo. Um, I believe they do that voodoo. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, this is, uh, which had that one glyph sort of style, but uh, this is kind of its own thing. In summary, uh, I, I like it, uh, right? I've been carrying this guy, and again, not for a whole lot of time. I carried this one a bunch. I like this a bunch. This is a gem solid piece, right? Uh, big, big, big fan of it. Um, it's a nice piece. And uh, this little guy right here uh, seems like basically everything I like about this, but with a Warncliffe blade and a little flipper out a deal. It's got a uh, it's got a, a little bit of a well ground in hole uh, here, and it's not a complete hole, obviously, but you can you know get your finger in there and flip it out like that. So if you are a finger flicky type and you missed that in the original, then this is going to give you that option. It doesn't really matter to me, and in practice, it's just going to collect gunk over time when you put in that kind of a groove. But at the same time, you know what? For people who give a damn, yeah. Sure, why not? Right, and it's still got some of the same design DNA, right, with the harpoon at the top here, which is definitely a thing. Um, and, you know, overall seems to be, well, relatively similar, right? I And in a lot of ways, it's doing a lot of the same things that uh, that, that were very nice about the original one, right? It's still a nice size, uh, certainly in the pocket, uh, although this is going to be a little bit more uh, intimidating for Edna in the lunchroom. Not a big deal, though. Still pretty straightforward disassembly, solid ergos, good design, just generally overall, and lots of nice little details here, right, with things like a screwless pocket clip. Well, I mean, there, there were screws, but they're internal, right, so you can't see that, right? That's nice and, you know, lock bar inserts, all kinds of stuff. Um, that's nice. The blade here is actually S90V rather than M390, right? Uh, the original one was M390. This is S90V. Um, does he give a hardness target? Um, 
He doesn't, right? But assuming that it's done well, and I don't have the ability to check the hardness in a repeatable and scientific manner, uh, but nevertheless, assuming it's done well, S90V, uh, S90V, that is, can be a very uh, uh, good performer. S90V is what you pay when you upgrade from S30V. Anyways, I, I digress. So that's very nice. And if you're hearing papers rustling, by the way, he gave some very helpful uh, you know, information that you can get on here. Um, and the action on it is still pretty damn solid. No real argument there. Uh, the factory on here, um, for the Raiden, uh, they, they did the very frustrating thing of the factory saying, no, you can't tell it who we are, right? Um, but you don't need to, right? There's only one factory that thinks they're that hot that they can be this crazy, uh, right? And we doesn't do it, best tech, guys, a concept, Kube, do you do, son? None of them do that, right? We can make a very creative guess and figure out who this could be. Um, it is, it, he was following the terms here, and I don't know. I hope that this is no longer the case and we can just come right out come Rayot out and say it. Um, but at the same time, it's insulting that this factory thinks they can snow the consumer and whatnot. I don't know why you need to do that, right? Transparency is important. Uh, and I think that's a very frustrating thing. That's not a null. That's on that factory who just really, they... They, they think they're the bee's knees. And to be fair, they are certainly a joint on a bee, um, but I don't know that it's the knee. It could be... I don't actually know other joints that bees have. They have hips... Maybe they got the maybe they got hips, right? Roses have hips. These must too. But anyways, factory, this is dumb. Stop. Uh, but hopefully that's uh, that's no longer an issue, and uh, that, that they can come in and just say that directly, right? Um, the other issues with the original were not so bad, right? The the balance is a little bit far back, right? That's not the end of the world, particularly. Whoa there, um, and, and so you know whatever, and that's still kind of the case here, but it's not a big deal. The thumb studs are a little bit on the tall side, but again, not a huge particular deal, um. And, you know, honestly, everything else is is fine, right? This is a nice little knife. I do think I prefer the pivot of the old knife, uh, just in that the, it was a little bit cleaner, not to have the screw hole on that side. But it's not the end of the world. I do have one major, major concern with this knife, though, right? I think we can very clearly look at this knife here, the Raikou, and realize that this is a... Um, this is an evolution of this knife here. So if the Raikou is the evolution then very clearly this knife needed to be called the Pikachu. Come on, Null Knives, get with the freaking program here. So anyways, that is a major concern of mine, and uh, in the future, Null should be a little bit more careful uh, before, they, before they do that, right? Um, so anyways, I, I, I digress. Ultimately, my conclusion on this knife is, if you like this one and you want to warn Cliff, you got this one. And... Yeah, that's kind of cool. In terms of pricing, uh, actually, that is my other beef here, right? The price has gone up, right? The original, uh, the, the Raiden uh, pricing was okay, right? Um, two eighty nine. <laughs> now we're up to three ten for a base model here. The um, black camo CF model is three hundred and ninety, and that's I gather what we're looking at here. And oh, that's that's just a whole bunch, right? Um. You have to be willing to pay that price. You have to like this design, like the ergonomics here enough to pay that price. And the very last thing that should be happening to a Chinese-made frame lock right now is the price going up. The market is so saturated with designers sending this stuff to a Chinese factory and getting them shipped back here that it's real hard to stand out. I think this is a great design. I think it is very nice. And you can see, like, the light... I like this knife a lot, but oh... Boy, this shouldn't have gotten a price hike, right? Uh, 390 bucks is a whole bunch of money for this. And even the base model at 310 is like, ugh. So, no, you are, everybody who's watching, no, you are not allowed to raise the price of your overseas made frame locks anymore. You are not allowed there at 400 bucks. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, that I guess would be my biggest gripe here, right? This is a bunch of freaking money, but it is also, a really freaking good knife, right? It is absolutely solid with S90V, with good ergonomics, with a cool blade, etc. So if you look at this and go and like, eh, I don't need it, then no, you don't need it, right? There are plenty of knives you can get for the same price uh, that are going to be as good or potentially even better. And certainly uh, uh, a little bit more... Um, like, elements of the design are pushing the bar a little bit more than, you know, an oven, say, is made frame lock with a carbon fiber side, right? But if you like the design, if you like the idea, if you like the Raikou, uh, or if Pikachu was your favorite Pokemon, then by God, uh, then go for it. Yes, I know it's Pikachu. I don't need to hear that in the comments. Thank you very much. That would be a real shock if that showed up. Anyways, <laughs> okay. 
Anyways, uh, <laughs> Nick baited trolls. It's super effective. Um, but probably not. So anyways, that's kind of my feeling of it, right? Is this is a good knife. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed carrying it. This is a prototype. Uh, right? Ultimately, we'll see what ships out to people, and this is also going to be a pre-order. Now, Null Knives has handled two pre-orders now, right? They've done the uh, the Raiden, uh, the, the Pikachu, that is, and it's went fine. They handled the v, uh, the Voodoo, and that was delayed by the factory, but that went fine, too, and it's kind of the nature of the beast with these kind of factories, right? But, um, you know, so I would assume that they're going to handle this one fine, too, but as always, pre-order at your own risk, right? That is a thing you want to consider there. But, uh, nevertheless, uh, you know, that's... It's solid. I enjoyed carrying it. Hopefully the final version is going to be a lot like this, because this is pretty damn solid. And if you're willing to pay that price to get yourself a Raikou here, then go for it. Otherwise, uh, the price is pushing real hard to be gem. Uh, right? I liked the Raiden a lot. It was pretty damn solid. Uh, but those price hikes really start taking it out of you, right? Um... It, 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 yeah, no, none, none of these things can go up right now. I, it's already rough. Um, so I don't know that I'm going to throw gem at it. And I also, again, it's a prototype. I can't necessarily go there. I feel pretty competent in this or uh, confident in this one. Uh, this, like I said, with that price, but nevertheless, it's a damn solid knife that I can say. And, uh, there you go. So anyways, I hope this has been interesting to you and that you, uh, have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. And, uh, well, bye now.